Uh, we're here at City Hall and our council members are uh, from remote tonight and we would start with item number one which is call the roll, Mr. Reynolds. Mayor Mars. Here. Councilor Lehman. Here. Councilor Whiting. Here. Councilor Contreras. Here. Councilor Brennan. Here. Thank you very much. Item number two, if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The Republic, for which is the one nation, one nation, one nation under God, liberty, 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 li
for use of its property for a mountain bike park, including construction of trails. 4B4 approves a contract with Confluence in an amount not to exceed $96,000, excuse me, $96,040 for an architectural history survey of the former Sweeney Marina. 4C1 adopts resolution number R2020 TAC 032, which authorizes submission of an application to the Community Oriented Policing Services School Violence Prevention Program Grant. 4D1 approves a contract with Pipe Services Corporation, an amount not to exceed $44,825.60 for the 2020 Sanitary Sewer Televising Project. 4D2 authorizes the annual roadway seal coat, crack sealing, and pavement marking work and a portion of the Capital Improvement Plan Project 2020 Pavement Rehabilitation which is Project CIF TAC 20, TAC 006, in the amount of $599,700 to be awarded as part of the 2020 South Metro Joint Powers Agreement contract. 4D4 adopts resolution number R2020, TAC 041, which awards a contract to Molnow Tracking <coughs> LLC for the 2020 bituminous overlay project, which is CIF TAC 20 TAC 002, in the amount of $1,482,285.75. 4D5 adopts resolution R2020 TAC 034, which authorizes an application submission to the 2020 regional solicitation for multi-use trails and bicycle facilities grant. 4D6 adopts resolution numbers R2020 TAC 035 and R2020 TAC 050, which authorizes applications to the 2020 regional solicitation for roadway modernization grant and to the 2020 highway safety improvement program grant. 4D7 adopts resolution R2020 TAC 046, which awards a contract to Rosti Construction Company for the 12th Avenue project, excuse me, the 12th Avenue Trail project, which is CIF TAC 20 TAC 003, in the amount of $839,376.20. And 48 adopts resolution number R2020 TAC 042, which approves plans and orders the advertisement for bids for the 2020 Trail Rehabilitation and Reconstruction Projects CIF TAC 20 TAC 001 and PA TAC 20 TAC 01. Mr. Reynolds, thank you very much. Um, I have a motion and a second, and the consent agenda has been read into the public record. There would be no further discussion. By voice vote, Councilor Brennan. Aye. Councillor Lehman. Aye. Councillor Whiting. Aye. Councillor Contreras. Aye. Mayor Mars. Aye. The consent agenda has been, the modified consent agenda has been approved. Thank you very much. Item number five. Uh, recognition of involved citizens uh, to the City Council on an item not on the agenda. I believe that we've been taking uh, emails in that regard and uh, Mr. Reynolds. Yeah, thank you Mayor Mars. At, at this point we have received no emails or no communication from any resident that requests to uh, bring something in front of City Council tonight. Okay, so no items in regard to number five. Moving forward then, we would move to item number six, business removed from consent. And we will start with 4B1, application for an environmental and natural resource trust grant. And Councillor Lehman had questions, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Murray. This is Councillor Lehman speaking. The, uh, I'm not, I'm not necessarily opposed to seeking a grant for the study on archaeology study of the park, 
my my concern is with the um, removal of the parking lot and the playground where I, I would like to see the park stay pretty much in its current state for the residents um, with kiosks and stuff. And I've, I've said this before, uh, educational pieces on the historic nature of both the tribal mounds, the mill, and some of the other features. So I'm not sure if I'm reading this correctly, saying that them items would be removed or if the study would study to see if they would be removed. Okay. Let's uh, ask uh, Mr. Kursky to comment on this in regard to your questions, Councilor Lehman. So, Mayor and Council, uh, as part of preliminary ar archaeological studies that have already been done in the park, the existing playground is sitting on a burial mound. Mm -hmm. Well, people look at the park and see the large mounds that are there. Most of the park, um, even though it's been leveled and is grass, there are still some barrier mounds remaining. So the playground is in an archeological sensitive area. Um, the volleyball court would end up being, the sand volleyball court would end up being in kind of the more natural area. So the plan right now is to actually study the rest of the park um, and see where the uh, archaeological resources are there and move the activity closer to the areas that have been disturbed, like down near the picnic shelter. That's where the new playground would go. Um, on the southwestern uh, corner of the park. So the parking lots are not getting removed um, at this time. It's just the playground, which was due and scheduled to be removed, I believe, at the end of this year anyway. It's reached its age where it's not in the best of shape, so it had been planned on being removed anyway. It would be replaced with more of a surface nature play um, down by the one picnic shelter that will remain. Culture Follow up question, maybe? Follow up question? Yes. He said follow up question. Huh? He said follow up question. Yes, yes. go ahead, Councilor. Councilor Lehman, follow-up question. Will, will there be an active playground for kids in this park? Yes, not as the, a metal one that you see there today, but there has been designed a nature playground that would be down around the existing um, shelter that will remain in the southwest corner of the park. There will not be a jungle gym as you see it today because that requires substantial ground penetration. Councilor Lehman, more. The current parking lot will remain the, by the playground? The parking lot that has the large kind of island in the middle of it will remain. Long term, the two short parking lots that are in the uh, oak tree root areas will be closed off. And then the large parking lot that's along um, the highway will also remain. So the parking lot by the playground will be closed off? No, the parking lot that's adjacent to the playground, which is the large parking lot, will remain. There's two little parking lots that are under the existing oak trees, so they would be on the east. southeast corner, will eventually degrade and go away. They're right on top of the mounds, and they're also on top of the roots for those oak trees. Councilor Lehman, do you have more? No, sir. All right. Mr. Mayor, this is uh, Council Member Whiting. I'd yes. like to make a motion to uh, uh, approve the application to the Legislative Citizens Commission of Minnesota Resources Environmental Natural Resources Trust Fund. This is Council Brennan. I second. I have a motion by Councilor Whiting, a second by Councilor Brennan. Um, further discussion, discussion, discussion. Seeing none by voice vote, Councilor Brennan. Aye. Councilor Lehman. Nay. Councilor Contreras. Aye. Councilor Whiting. 
Aye. Mayor Mars, aye. So that passes four to one. We will move on to item number 4B2, which is the application to the Met Council for a TBRA grant. And Councilor Lehman, uh, your questions on this, please go ahead. Uh, Councilor Lehman, Mayor, thank you. I, I took this off so I can vote against it. Um, there's almost, uh, we're looking for another almost a million dollars in taxpayer money to go into this project. Um, every time we act on this project, it's more tax dollars and more tax dollars. And at some point, uh, it's, in my mind, it's just unacceptable use of tax dollars in such extreme. So I wanted to take it off so I had the opportunity to vote against it. Okay. So no real questions, just a statement? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep, no, I think... This uh, is Council... Yes, I'm Councilor sorry. Brennan. This is Council Member Brennan. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number R2020-045, which is an application for a T T Metropolitan Council TBRA grant. This is Councilman Contreras, I second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion? 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 By voice vote? Councilor Brennan? Aye. Councilor Lehman? No. Councilor Whiting? Aye. Councilor Contreras? Aye. Mayor Mars, aye. The motion passes uh, four to one. Thank you very much. Moving ahead then to 4B5, adoption of the 2020 Minnesota State Codes. Councilor Lehman, question. Thank you, Mayor Mars, Councilor Lehman. I took it off because uh, in my information, I didn't have a the actual changes to the building codes um, in our packet. So I haven't had the chance to read them and see what's in them. Um, my concern is a lot of these codes are gonna make housing much more expensive. And according to the memo, it's one updated 2015. So we must have missed 16, 17, 18, and 19. Um, I don't believe we're required to do this. It is recommended. I'd like to look through them and see which ones are realistic uh, and which ones are not and, and how they affect the cost of housing. All right, do you have uh, specific questions? Or, uh, Mr. I think I just, Go ahead. I think I, just asked, I think I just asked my specific question. Number one, I'd like to read the full content. Number two, I'd like to know how they affect the price of housing. Um, and which ones are actually necessary for structural integrity. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kursky. Mayor and Council, so this, um, the city is adopting the Minnesota State Codes. As of January 1st, 2008, the municipality has in effect an ordinance adopting the State Building Code, which we do. That municipality must continue to administer and enforce the State Building Code within its jurisdiction. The municipality is prohibited from repealing its ordinance and adopting the state code. So whether we want to or not, we're required by state law. To, we're one of the seven um, metro counties that has to enforce the state building code. This is not a pick and choose. Um, the state is adopting the 2018 code. So we're already two years behind it. This Minnesota is a little unusual and they don't adopt the standard building code, they spend a couple years making tweaks to it. And that is done by the building industry and building officials, insurance industry, fire departments, et cetera. You will see the uh, electrical code. I think it will be on the agenda in June because it's adopted for July 1. The changes are voluminous. Um, our staff is actually still reading through it. It's probably in the thousands of pages and they actually don't print a 
compare side by side. It's just a completely new code. Um, most of the contractors in the state have been going to training for probably the past six months to a year so that they're up to date on the new code. There's changes in pipe, wood, spans, fire protection. It's a pretty comprehensive code change since it's been five years. Thank you. Follow up question? Right. Say that again, Councillor Lehman. Follow up question, Mayor? Yes. Councillor Lehman, following question. Conservation codes for existing buildings. What does that mean? Uh, Mayor and Council, that's the energy code. Okay, what does that mean for an existing building? So whatever the requirements were in 2015, they've been updated to the 2018 code that had been passed. So that's energy, energy efficiency, insulation requirements, uh, building on- Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're talking about existing buildings. We're, uh, these codes are going to make somebody with an existing building go back and re-insulate an existing building? No. So the uh, mayor and council, so if you're renovating a building today and you want to put a commercial building, let's say, and you want to put in new front doors, there's now a requirement that you have an airlock so that all the cold air or hot air isn't blowing into a commercial building. If you're renovating, yes. if you have an existing building and do no renovation, I believe you're grandfathered in on the old stuff, right? And as long as you don't change the use. Right, right. Correct. change the use. Last question? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Councilor Lehman, my last question on the topic. Uh, Mr. Kirsty stated that the state is adopting the 2018 codes why are we going two years ahead of the state? Mayor and Council, no, they are adopting as the 2020 code in Minnesota, the building code from 2018, because as I said, the state makes a lot of changes to the code. Um, there's a whole committee that participates in that from the building industry and contractors. And it takes them a couple years to look through that code and make changes. So we're always behind. So again, we're adopting the 2018 code. We've been using the 2015 code. So the 2020 code in Minnesota is actually the national code from 18 with Minnesota modifications. Other counselors have a question? Mayor Mr. Mike, Mayor, the, the, oh. the chair. Oh. Uh, it's, it's Councilor Contreras. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number R2020-048, adopting the new Minnesota building codes by um, reference. Thank you. This is Councilor Whiting, I second. Thank you, I have a motion by Councilor Contreras, a second by Councilor Whiting. Further discussion? Mayor. Councilor Lehman. Councilman Lehman, I, I, would, I have a hard time voting on something that I haven't had the ability to read, so I'll be voting against it until I read it. Thank you. Further discussion? Discussion? By voice vote, Councilor Brennan? Aye. Councilor Lehman? Opposed. Councilor Whiting? Aye. Councilor Contreras? Aye. Mayor Mars? Aye. Motion passes four to one. Thank you. Moving ahead to 4D3, which is the 2020 full depth pavement reconstruction project. Councilor Lehman, questions? Thank you, Mayor Myers. Uh, not so much of a question. Well, actually, it could be a question. Uh, this is Councilor Lehman. Um, I ask this to be removed from the consent agenda because, as we all know, we had a lot of folks in the audience with questions the last time we had this discussion. Um, 
I think it's only fair that we discuss it publicly and let the those impacted and answer some of them questions, namely the uh, Montecito area where there's some, some changes to the subsoils um, and some assessment changes. Um, and I just thought it was prudent and transparent for us to have that discussion publicly at this meeting before we adopt this. Okay, I, Mr. Reynolds, uh, I had some questions on this and maybe some other council members had questions on this. He put out an email the other day with some uh, comments in regard to that. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Reynolds and go to Steve if necessary. Yeah, we can go ahead and go to Mr. Lillyhog. He is uh, uh, ready to discuss this in depth. Mayor and council members, good evening. Someone you can hear me? Literally. Okay, I will talk louder. Um, there you go. All right, we received bids for the 2020 full depth pavement reconstruction project. They were good bids. Um, they came about $240,000 underneath our engineer's estimate. Uh, when we broke that down for the different neighborhood, um, the majority of the, the neighborhoods and the individual assessment costs were reduced. For the Park Ridge um, neighborhood, they were um, just slightly under what the assessments were going to be, and that was, and it it ran, it went from about forty four hundred dollars to forty two hundred dollars per lot. The Dominion neighborhood um, generally was reduced by five hundred dollars. The West Ridge neighborhood went up about two hundred fifty dollars. Um, the Montecito area, we saw that um, when we prorated the costs and with some of the design changes that we made, it was actually reduced by about $1,000 from 4300 to about 3300 per lot. And then in the last um, area of project on the Sarazen Street area, um, this was prorated uh, basically and assessed just to the hospital. It went from about $24,000 $24, to $17,005. Uh, when we had the public hearing, we had um, the Montecito neighborhood um, showed up and they had uh, substantial questions. And um, we actually, as I indicated, we went back and revised our design for that neighborhood. We, um, after that meeting, we went out and got additional soil borings. We did confirm that we did not need to subcut and put a, a one foot sand section underneath that roadway due to the favorable soils that exist in Montecito. Um, we did keep a little placeholder for some subsoil corrections if we needed it, but that was the uh, the most notable savings um, throughout the project. Um, on the public outreach part of it, um, when we did receive these bids uh, right at the end of March, we sent a letter to the Montecito uh, neighborhood indicating um, that, that there were savings with the bid. Um, and then as we go forward, we're going to give more specific information letter and details on the project as a whole, as well as coordinate the projects with the neighborhoods. Um, so with that, if there's any other further specifics and questions, I'd be open for them. Thank you, Steve. Um, Councilor Lehman, follow-up questions? Thank you, Mayor. Councilor Lehman speaking. Uh, the only other, first I wanna thank staff for uh, putting this information out publicly. Um, it's very much appreciated. Um, and thanks for the great bids. Second uh, question I had was, there was some discussion at that last meeting about various parcels, how some corner lots have 50% on each side, um, and then other lots have 100% frontage. Um, I know there were two or three, I think there was, that had some issues about how they were being viewed uh, I'm assuming that was addressed. Steve? Um, Mayor and council members, um, as far as addressing that, we, we will bring that back to city council for final consideration during the final assessment hearing at the end of the project. Um, so there, there is no formal action that needs to be done on the actual assessment breakdown. Um, we presented our recommendation at the preliminary assessment hearing. Um, so we will bring that back again to city council um, at, at the final assessment hearing. And prior to that, we, we do plan on uh, preparing more public outreach uh, pertaining to that, um, that specific. Thank you. 
Thank you. I think that staff's done a good job, uh, as always, but uh, some extra special care here to, uh, to make sure that we're doing the right long-term reconstruction, um, as well as trying to save some money where we can here on, the, on this uh, road con reconstruction project for 2020. Are there other, other questions from counselors? Mr. Mayor, this is Council Member Whiting. Yes, go ahead. Hello, this is Council Member Whiting. I'd like to make adopt resolution R2020-040, awarding a contract in the amount of $2,206,194.77 to W.M. Mueller & Sons Incorporated for the 2020 full depth Pavement Reconstruction Project, CIF 20-004. Councilor Contreras, second. I have a motion by Councilor Whiting, a second by Councilor Contreras. Uh, further discussion? 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 By voice vote, Councilor Brennan. Aye. Councillor Lehman. Aye. Councillor Whiting. Aye. Councillor Contreras. Aye. Mayor Mars. Aye. The resolution passes. Thank you. That would conclude our items on item number six, business removed from consent. We would move to item number seven, recess for EDA meeting, and I would entertain a motion to recess. This is Councilor Brennan. I, what? I second. <laughs> I, ha I have a motion by Councilor Whiting and a second by Councilor Contreras to stand in recess for the EDA. <laughs> Further discussion, 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 by voice vote, Councillor Brennan? Aye. Councillor Lehman? Aye. Councillor Whiting? Aye. Councillor Contreras? Aye. Mayor Mars? Aye. We will stand in recess for the EDA. Mr. President, the meeting is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, welcome to the Shakopee Economic Development Authority meeting for April 7th, 2020. Uh, should we do a, a voice roll call, please? Let's start with uh, Member Lehman. Here. Member Mars. Here. Member Brennan. Here. Member Contreras. Here. Uh, for second item is the approval of the agenda. Mr. President. Go ahead, Mr. Lehman. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. This is Mr. Brennan, President, I, I second it. <laughs> we have a motion and a second by uh, Brennan uh, to approve the agenda. Any other discussion? Discussion, discussion? All those in favor, uh, we'll start with uh, Mr. Lehman. Aye. Mr. Mars. Aye. Ms. Brennan. Aye. Ms. Contreras. Aye. All right, all, all approved and uh, any dissenting? So uh, item three is our consent business, which uh, includes the EDA minutes. Is there any... Questions about the minutes. Mr. President. Mr. Lehman, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Lehman speaking, I'd like to approve the motion to approve the consent business. The motion on the floor, is there a second? This is Brennan, I second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We have a motion and a second uh, by Brennan for the consent business. Uh, 
All those Mr. in President, favor, uh, President, go ahead. Mr. President, as we go through the roll call vote, can you uh, make your vote publicly known, please? Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I, uh, I will amend the, the minutes to reflect that I voted in the approval for both of the uh, above items. Uh, let's, uh, on the uh, consent business, uh, we have a motion. Is there a second? I made the motion already. I second, second it as Brennan. The motion is, we have a motion and second by Brennan. Is, uh, let's go through the roll again. Uh, Council uh, Member Brennan? Aye. Member Lehman? Aye. Member Mars? Aye. Member Contreras? Aye. And Member Whiting is aye. Uh, the other things on our agenda is the EDA bill list. Was there any questions on the bill list? Hearing none, uh, the next item on the agenda would be a motion to adjourn. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to adjourn to Tuesday, April 21, 7 p.m. Contreras, um, no, um, second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn to Tuesday, April 21st at 7 p.m. All those in favor, we'll go through the roll. Uh, Member Brennan? Aye. Member Lehman? Aye. Member Mars? Aye. Member Contreras? Aye. And Member Whiting says aye. Thank you. We're adjourned, Mr. Mayor. The meeting is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. We will reconvene the City of Shakopee City Council meeting for April 7, 2020. We just completed our EDA meeting and we would move ahead to um, item 9A, which is our city bill list for our review. And then we would move to item number 9B, which is our liaison administration report. So we would stand with uh, Councillor Brennan, a liaison report, please. Okay, um, I attended the, my first um, Shakopee Public Utility Commission meeting last night. Um, the commission approved a water tank number eight, which is in the Latour Farm area um, up in the Windermere project. Um, there was, uh, the tank will be 750 gallons, 750,000 gallons. Um, and there is a budget shortfall of $1.359 million. Um, this is um, due to errors in the budgeting process in the CIP. Um, and according to um, the finance director, it will be worked out in the water connection charge. Um, so that's something that I'll be having to watch um, because we don't want to increase our water connect connection charges again. Um, it, we also approved um, new uh, officers for um, the commission. Um, um, we elected um, Deb Amundsen as president and Kathy Mokel as vice president. Um, the different, um, there, the, they went through the process of their COVID-19 preparedness planning um, in the, for both the employees and for customer relations. Um, the the um, um, office is closed for, for business. Others stand through phone calls and there's a drop off, drop off area for payments and other correspondence. Um, so it's phone calls and emails only. Um, they are prepared to enter homes if necessary. They'll be prepared to have gloves and um, that type of um, protective gear on um, if that's necessary. And they wanted to remind people that they will not be um, shutting off um, or turning off uh, electricity or water through this time of COVID-19. Um, I think I, I think all in all that's it. Um, today there was an article that was released um, about John Crook's um, um, salary and it had the fact that his salary is exceeding the um, the allowed amount by Minnesota statute. Um, and I have um, written a letter to um, 
President Amundsen to see if we can have a special meeting call to discuss this. Um, and at this point, I haven't heard back from her. Uh, and that's all I have. Uh, Councillor Brennan, thank you very much. Councillor Lehman, liaison report. My liaison um, have been canceled due to the physical <clears throat> distancing requirements of COVID-19. Thank you. Councillor Whiting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have no liaison reports, but I do want to take a minute to uh, thank all the health care and emergency workers out there for putting their health on the line for our community. And uh, I want to congratulate citizens for developing creative and uh, ideas to assist and cope and keep kids busy and take care of our community members. Uh, I think <clears throat> we've, uh, it, this is a hard time for everybody, and I'm just glad to see our community coming together and helping people out. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Councilor Contreras, liaison report. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, um, the Shakopee Diversity Alliance held a bilingual listening session with multiple panelists and spoke about the COVID-19 and being ready. Um, they provided the, the community with resources available from food drive to um, health care and medical information, um, what to do you know, if you have the symptoms and the extreme importance of social distancing. It was all great information in um, bilingual, you know, uh, came in different uh, languages, well, in, in Spanish mainly and in English um, for our community. So thank you to them for putting that out. Thank you. Um, I do not have a liaison report as well. A lot of things have been shut down. But in regard to our residents here in Shakopee, uh, we are in unprecedented times with this COVID-19. Whether you're out of work, working from home, or out on the front lines in your industry or the healthcare field, I'd like you to know that your city is thinking of all of you. We believe we have, of, we all have been affected one way or another through this over the last many weeks. Yet when I look at our residents, I see that we are resilient, adaptable, and most of all, resourceful. I have seen us come together as a community, much like our families coming together. There's food drives, there's efforts for the front medical people, there are folks that will deliver things to you. We are all trying to support each other in our local businesses. We will, get through, we will get through this together. I believe it has made us stronger. And I certainly have enjoyed that I think that because of this, families are coming together and getting stronger. I want all of our residents to be safe, I want you to be careful. I want you to be cognizant of what's around you. We have more work to do in the coming weeks to beat this thing. I encourage you all to stay strong. And most of all, be kind. Thank you, and those are my comments and for my liaison report. And I would move ahead then to count our uh, Administrator Reynolds uh, for your administration report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Uh, obviously a pretty challenging time for all of us. Uh, I'm extremely happy to report that most of our operations continue. Uh, the, the one issue that we do have is uh, uh, when we're looking at this from a long-term perspective uh, and we're looking at our financial condition, you know, we're in the best financial condition that we can be in prior to this event, which is a great thing. But the, the real issue that we have is that we're going to not so much have a lot of expenses that come out of this, although there will be some. Our real issue is gonna be a loss of revenue. And uh, we've already started tracking that. We've also started, a, started assigning uh, uh, codes to the loss of revenue. So in case there is a, an opportunity to recoup some of that in the future, we'll be ready and able to, to uh, make sure that we have all that information to make that happen. 
So I appreciate Council's uh, patience with us through this period. Uh, you've all been great. Uh, it's, 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 it's been an honor to, to try to uh, work through these issues with you at the helm, and I appreciate that, and I know that the uh, residents and especially city staff does as well. And that is my report. Mr. Reynolds, thank you very much. We will now move on to 9C, which is an operationals update, and we'll start with Mr. Reynolds and then Chief Tate. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug into Chief Tate at this point. We, uh, you know, I essentially said what I was gonna say as part of my report there. So, uh, Chief Tate, are you on the line? I am, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, we've got you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, I'll try and be uh, brief and to the point here. Uh, overall, um, our operations are, are going very smoothly. Um, we're in constant contact with St. Francis, um, other agencies, not just in the county, but around the state, because we're all having the same issues. Thankfully, we're in a county that uh, is nowhere near uh, a hotbed for, for this. Uh, as of 5.30, we're at 16 confirmed cases in the county. Uh, one death, but some other numbers, uh, there's not currently one person uh, hospitalized in Scott County and 14 of the 16 are no longer in isolation. So um, those are encouraging numbers, but um, like you said, Mayor, you know, we still have a, a road to go uh, ahead here. Uh, I get asked a lot about PPE and where we're at. Uh, we are just fine. And I've talked to the fire chief and they're, they're good too. We haven't burned through uh, hardly anything. Um, there are groups out there. Mayor, I believe Lowe's reached out to you uh, asking, do you know, they've solicited us. They've solicited, uh, I think, the fire department. Uh, if you get asked, uh, we do not need anything um, right now. We've been able to get whatever we want um, uh, through, you know, other channels. But from a PPE standpoint, we're, we're doing very, very well. Um, we do have one staff member in, in quarantine right now. Uh, it was a very low risk exposure. Um, it's kind of the uh, you know line of the day out of an uh, abundance of caution. Uh, we're keeping that officer uh, out until we get uh, a test result back. But um, otherwise, staff wise, we're we're doing okay. I, a little more than probably half a dozen of our staff have spouses who are either paramedics or, or nurses. So. There's been a couple of them that have had to be tested, um, but we're working through that with those officers and, and their families. Uh, where we are seeing some increases, obviously the, the permit to purchase applications in the last two and a half, three weeks, we're at approximately 130 people uh, have come in for a permit to purchase. Uh, we still are relatively busy. Uh, some of the crime has gone down, but our call load hasn't necessarily gone down. Um, the compliance order uh, from the, the governor, the state home order. Uh, we have received a lot of calls. Uh, I'm guessing some of you have received emails as well uh, on the state home order. I would say half of them have come from residents uh, complaining whether it's kids playing tackle football or a business being open. The other half are coming from uh, businesses whose competitors are still operating. An example would be a lawn care service. So we've put out our uh, procedure and we've worked with a lot of other cities that have gone through these with you know some of the national chain stores. Uh, the last thing we want to do is actually intervene in these things, to be quite honest with you. Uh, it really puts us in a, in a difficult position. There's a lot of latitude for being outside under the current order. We're all hearing that there you know, might be modifications coming up, and, and I hope there's a little more clarity, but uh, different things you know, change, and the order gets modified uh, frequently. But we've got a good procedure in place and a one-person point of contact at the police department that's working with the state to kind of iron, iron these out. Um, with that, I'd be happy to take any, any questions. Chief Tate, thanks for that update, I uh, think it's important. Um, counselors, uh, questions of uh, the chief or Mr. Reynolds and I'll, uh, Councilor Brennan. 
Um, I, I, are you, have you modified your um, shifts at all on your, are you, are you run a regular shift for, for your staff? Mayor, members of council, we have, we have gone to a modified shift, uh, 12 hour days. And the way that we're, we've sectioned off our officers, uh, including the um, school resource officers, some of the, we're doing that so we have a, a bullpen, so to speak. If if we did have something affect one shift more than another, we would be able to um, we'd be able to compensate with that. We also think it's important. There's a lot of different schedules out there. Every department's doing something a little little different, but this 50-50 model we we're basing it on is one that we've we've seen uh, throughout the country probably the most and. We feel, we feel it's important that we do have officers out there. I, these businesses are vacant. We've caught prowlers. Um, there are people take, trying to take advantage of this, this situation. And it's important even in the morning, let's say at Sam's Club, when, when you know, you'll get several people lining up outside uh, just to have an officer present and, and hopefully a calming uh, presence. Uh, we feel that that's important too. But we have we have gone to a, a modified schedule that we're running through the end of April, and we'll assess it maybe in a week or two if we need to continue it. Okay, thank you, um, and thank you for the uh, for the police officers and the and the fire department for for um, putting that modification in place and being willing to and being willing to do that. I appreciate all the hard work that they've been doing. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lehman, did you have anything specific for the chief? No, but I do have two items on their other business. Okay. Uh, Councillor Whiting? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thanks, Chief, for uh, you know, hanging in there and doing, doing a great job. That's, that's all I have. And, and uh, There's a lot of issues with stress and things with employees and, and uh, concern with people coping and, and uh, so everything we can do to help our officers and help our community, I appreciate. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody's been doing real well uh, so far. Councilor Contreras. No question. Just um, to, just to tell Chief Tate, thank you and appreciate the extra hard work you guys are taking on and keep it up. And I um, actually I have your 2019 annual report. And again, awesome work. Looks good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chief Tate, for all that you do uh, with you and your department and uh, as well as the fire department during this difficult time. If uh, maybe this is a better question for Mr. Reynolds, you know, we don't want residents calling 911 unless it's an absolute emergency or calling City Hall. What's the best resource for our resident? Well, luckily, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, the state a couple days ago put out word that uh, uh, any, any complaints need to be directed specifically to them. And we have that uh, complaint uh, number uh, and email address on our website. Uh, and they can make it directly to the state. And what the state will do is they'll filter those so we're, we don't have, because frankly, prior to that happening, uh, I was getting calls, my staff was getting calls, uh, which which is fine. I would much rather have that happen than the police department getting calls uh, about uh, violations of the order when the police really have more important jobs that they need to be focusing on. And so now that that's in effect, uh, I had I did not receive a single call today. I don't know if uh, Chief Tate did, uh, but uh, if if we are called, we will direct them to to uh, to make sure that they file that with the state. All right. And that's on our website. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, moving ahead then to number item number 10, other business. Um, Councilor Lehman. Thank you, Mayor. This is Councilor Lehman. I have two items, and I, I didn't do them under liaison report because they're really not liaison reports, but I did want to make a mention. The first one is uh, Mayor John Schmidt's passing. I had the privilege of serving with him for his eight years as mayor. I'd like to say that he's a honest, fair, and respectable individual that I appreciated serving with. Um, he's got a loving family. 
my, my condolences to them. Um, I just wanted to put that out there. The, the second con- uh, thing I'd like to talk a little bit about was the COVID-19 um, issues. First, obviously, thanks to all the frontline workers. That includes our frontline workers, whether they're public works, police, fire, uh, administration, all of our uh, workforce. Uh, it's difficult for everybody, but it, absolutely, especially the medical care industry. I, th- I think it's important that two, two points I want to make about COVID-19 that's important to get out. First is we need to be careful about any kind of stigma that goes along with this. Because we need to remember, this is an invisible virus that has come from somewhere else that you can't see. And if somebody does acquire this, it's by no fault of their own. Second point I would make is we need to be thinking ahead. And as uh, Mr. Reynolds pointed out, the economic implications further down the road with the the nation pretty much shut down, uh, a recession greater than 08 is, is not out of the, uh, out of the realm. Um, and the third thing I guess I would say is, is we know not only in our country and our state specifically, we're ranked right up there is doing the best job that I don't want to call it social distancing because that's not really the case. It's physical distancing. Uh, you can be socializing all you want. You just have to have that physical separation um, and we need to stress that to those that aren't doing that, uh, that they may not know that they're, they have it or somebody else may not know they have it and, and they can spread it and overwhelm the medical system. So uh, we are doing a great job as a state, but there are some of the topics I wanted to touch on for people to think about. Um, Councilor Lehman, thank you very much. And your, your points are well taken and, uh, also, uh, Mayor Schmidt, uh, who just recently passed, a longtime mayor, and um, uh, I learned a lot from him um, just on being patient. Um, he had a lot of history. I knew him for over 25 years. Uh, he served our community very, very well over that time and uh, we're thankful for his service. So thank you for that. Um, other business, Councilor Brennan? No. Councilor Whiting? Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do have a concern. I'd like to see uh, if staff can start taking a look at what we can do with some of our uh, organic recycling. We, we don't have any, uh, Republic's not taking it, the Orc's not taking it. People are sitting at home and working on their yards. It's not a big issue that, but I, I think there's a way we can work to try and uh, help people with their yard waste uh, starting to pile up. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Councilor Contreras? None right now, thank you. Um, all right, um, moving ahead then, if we have no other business, item number 11, uh, adjournment. Mayor Martin. I'm sorry. Mayor Martin. More, Councilor Lehman. Thank you, Mayor Mars. Councilor Lehman speaking. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn to Tuesday, April 21st, 7 p.m. This is Brennan, I second. Thank you very much. I have a motion by Councilor Lehman, a second by Councilor Brennan to adjourn to April 21st, 2020 at 7 p.m. Um, before we vote, I just want to tip my hat to city staff and their awesome IT department for pulling off our remote council meeting. Uh, we'll probably have another one here coming up on April 21st, but uh, thank you very much for making all the technology work. Um, I have a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion? 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 Councilor Brennan? Aye. Councilor Lehman? Aye. Councilor Whiting? Aye. 
Councilor Contreras. Aye. Mayor Mars. Aye. Thank you all very much. We stand adjourned on the seventh day of April at 8 p.m. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Really. You're welcome. Seven books. Would you like those seven books, Councilman, or will seven be your? Are they books on tapes? You can actually use it.